Welcome to MMAfighting.com's preview of Strikeforce Fedor versus Henderson alongside our very own Matt Erickson. I'm Ariel Hawani and we are standing outside the Sears Center here in Hoffman Estates, Illinois, where on Saturday night, MMA legends Fedor Emelianenko and Dan Henderson will meet in a highly anticipated heavyweight bout. And, and Matt, first things first, uh, I must say we've done a lot of these with Mike Chipetta, Ben, folks. You are rocking a coat, my friend, and I appreciate that. Yeah. And I think that now you, you should replace them for all the preview shows in the foreseeable future. I can do that. When, when you look like this, you got to distract a little bit with something else. So. Well, we appreciate it very much. Thank you for, uh, for doing this. And, and it's a little hot out here. We're in the middle of Nowheresville. Let's, and I'm not trying to you know, hate on your neck of the woods here. But it is hot, so I appreciate the, the jacket even more so. I'm not even wearing one. Yeah. This is, uh, we're used to this in Chicagoland. The humidity is terrible. You're not as much used to this in, in, in New York, but it gets brutal here in the summer. Well, speaking of the fact that uh, you are from this area, you're, you're around 45 minutes or so from here, right? That's where you live. Sure. Um, what kind of buzz have you felt for this event? And, and maybe if you could compare it to the last time Strike Force was here in, in November of 2009, Fedor versus Brett Rogers. You know, it, it hasn't been that noticeable, which is kind of a shame. Obviously, this card's way better than the last time uh, they were in town. Uh, I felt like I saw it a little bit more uh, on TV, newspapers, uh, billboards uh, two years ago. Why do you think that is? Uh, Maybe a, a Zufa influence. They may have uh, figured that they get enough buzz already from UFC shows, and, and they might not feel the need to do as much promotion for this. Yeah, and, and that said, though, uh, a, a, an official from Strike Force and Zufa told me yesterday that they had sold 9,000 tickets as of yesterday afternoon. Uh, a sellout would be 10,000. So clearly, the fans here are actually looking forward to it. Maybe the marketing not as high as last time. Correct, and and they should. Obviously, it's a fantastic card. Everybody knows it. Right. All right. So let's talk about this clash of the titans, as they're calling it, two MMA legends. Who do you think has has more to lose on Saturday night? Uh, the loser of the bout, who's in worse shape? Would it be Fedor if he loses or Dan Henderson? Of course, Fedor, uh, two fight losing streak going into this one. And, and Henderson's coming off that title win over Feijão. And if you ask me, this is kind of just gravy for him because we never really considered him a heavyweight fighter before. Sure. I think clearly Fedor has the most to lose. Dan Henderson's not supposed to win this fight. He's a, you know more than two to one underdog. Um, it is a super fight. He doesn't have his title on the line. He's fighting a guy much bigger than him, 30 pounds, but big enough uh, nonetheless. And uh, Fedor could be looking at retirement if he loses. Do you think if he loses this fight, maybe not retirement, but the, the relationship between Strike Force and M1 Global will be finished? It's certainly a death knell if, if that happens. I think uh, between the, the heavyweight tournament sort of falling apart a little bit with the Overeem situation, Another uh, another Fedor loss would, would really maybe put the start to put the nail in the coffin. Yeah, you were at the uh, media workouts on Wednesday. You you got a chance to see Fedor work out in, in front of the media, and you know, I talked about this a bit on Twitter. I got a little heat for us for this when I said that he looked very focused and, and determined. And and I think that if you were there, you can kind of sense what I was talking about. I mean, the guy went in there all business, worked uh, all around the, the the room there. Dan Henderson didn't even work out, and and just looked very much like a man on a mission. Would you agree? He looked fantastic. I mean, he looked as better than any of the other seven fighters that we saw work out. Uh, Dan not included, as you say, because he didn't work out. But, um, yeah, it was a good 30, 35-minute workout. He looked great. He looked intense. I talked to uh, other members of the media who said when he got within 10 feet of him, they were actually kind of scared to be near him. So he, he looked great. On Monday, when someone asked me on the MMA hour who I thought would win this fight, I, I picked Henderson. After his workout on Wednesday, I changed my pick. I picked Fedor. Was that foolish? Is it, is it a mistake to go off uh, you know, what someone does in, in a media workout? I don't think so. I've been flip-flopping on this for the last couple of weeks. I was on the Henderson bandwagon. Fedor came in. He looked trim. He looked rejuvenated, so to speak. Uh, I think it's a smart pick. So who are you picking and why? I am picking Fedor. I think he's got more ways to win the fight. Um, and don't underestimate the fact that he does have a ton on the line. A third loss is, I think it's horrendous for his legacy. How do you think the fight will actually play out? I see a lot of clinch work. Uh, I think if Dan wants to take it to the ground, he can probably do it. I don't know if that's the wisest choice for him. I think he could get submitted there. Uh, Fedor is very good off his back, as we all know. Um, I see a lot of clinch work. I, I think it's a decision, probably. Kind of apropos that there would be a lot of clinch work, considering the fact that they're both uh, sure. sponsored by Clinch Gear, right? Be perfect, right. perfect for them. Okay. And and if we can look ahead, uh, an official from M1 Global told me last night that there's one more fight left on that contract between M1 and Strike Force. What do you think Strike Force would do with Fedor if he did win this fight? You know, I have no idea. Maybe try and get him in one more super kind of fight, 
it's certainly not something that they're going to be able to use to elevate him toward a title shot of any kind, though. Maybe an Overeem fight since he's out of the tournament. Perhaps. I mean, that would be, a, you know, that's that's the one everybody wanted to see in the tournament. Um, maybe Barnett, you know, make something like that happen, but uh, they'd have to do something that's marketable like this one. Any shot, in your opinion, uh, Zufa, UFC, sits down with M1 again. He's he's coming off a win. Uh, you know, they own Strikeforce now. There's no better time, really, than now to, than to revisit this. Do you think that might happen? It would seem doubtful, but, you know, who would have thought, you know, back in March that they were going to go ahead and purchase Strikeforce, too? Right. I think anything can happen at this point. All right, let's talk about the co-main event. Misha take going up against Marluce Kunin for the Strikeforce 135-pound title. Uh, a very important women's title fight, a very important women's fight, period. And uh, I brought this up in the press conference yesterday, and I want to get your take on it. I actually think that this fight is in some ways more important than Gina Crano versus Cyborg because it is the co-main event to one of the biggest fights in Strikeforce and Showtime MMA history. And a lot of people will be tuning in to see that fight, but they're going to have to watch the women's fight, and they may be exposed to women's MMA for the first sure. time. Would you agree? Absolutely. And like you said, that Toronto uh, cyborg fight. It's two years ago. A lot has happened in women's MMA since then. Uh, maybe not as many opinions have changed about it uh, as should have, but there, uh, as, as both Marlus and, and Misha have said, there's a lot on the line in this fight for both of them. Not just in terms of who wins and loses, but for the whole, you know, the whole sport of women's MMA. And Misha hasn't fought since last August when she won that one night tournament. How do you think she's going to look out there? She seemed to, she seemed to look pretty good uh, at the workouts. She said that she didn't expect there to be much cage rust at all. You know, she works out with a pretty good team, uh, a team alpha male. Um, but you know, all of these fighters always say, "I don't expect cage rust to be a problem," and sometimes it is. Who do you like in that fight? I do like Misha. I think she can grind out a decision. Uh, she claims that she's not going to get submitted, and we know that's where Marlus's strength is. Uh, that's obviously Marlus's key to victory. I think is be able to get the fight. Uh, on her back and be able to work for a submission. Now you say she'll grind out a decision. That's a 25-minute fight then. Is that a good thing for women's MMA in Zufa? It may not be. It may not be. Uh, I think if they can manage to keep it exciting, uh, they could kind of it, it could be okay. Right. And more to that point about it being such an important fight, do you think that there are people in Zufa looking at this fight? It is the first uh, women's title fight in Zufa history. Uh, and, and they're kind of looking at this as sort of a case-by-case -case situation. You know, the first women's fight uh, in Zufa, that was a month or so ago. That was the Jermaine Derondami, uh, Julie Budd fight. That wasn't a great fight. Then uh, a couple of weeks ago, or actually last week, Sarah Kaufman, she had a good performance on the Challenger show, but it seems as though they haven't fully committed to it yet. So do you feel as though there's a lot of pressure on these two women on Saturday night? I think they're putting some pressure on themselves uh, because of that, not necessarily knowing what the future holds, um, not just for strike force, but, you know, We've seen other promotions get folded into the UFC. I think there's a lot of assumptions that the same thing would happen with Strike Force. If that's the case, and, and Dana holds true to his word that, you know, there maybe is not a home in the UFC for, for women's MMA, uh, where are these guys going to go to fight? Right. Or, or girls? Girls. Right, exactly. All right, there are two important welterweight fights on the card as well. Tarek Safadin is fighting Scott Smith, and, and most importantly, Tyron Woodley fighting Paul Daly. And right now, the welterweight situation in Strike Force is a mess. Nick Diaz vacated the title. He's going to fight GSP. We don't really know what they're going to do with the title uh, or how they're going to crown a new champion. What do you think they should do? I think the, the winner of these two fights needs to fight each other for, uh, for, the, for the title. Um, I suppose they're going to also need to wait and see what happens with, with uh, Nick Diaz. If he loses to GSP, perhaps he comes back and, and gets back in that equation. Um, I, I think they're kind of in a wait-and-see mo mode until after uh, October. When you look at Woodley versus Daly on paper, it's kind of like the cost check fight all over again for Daly. you got a great wrestler, a guy with great wrestling credentials fighting Daly, the striker. He doesn't like to go to the ground. Uh, weak take down the fence. Do you feel as though this is a horrible matchup for Paul? I think it's pretty bad. Uh, and he's about a two to one underdog, which I was a little surprised at actually. I, I thought it'd be closer than that. Um, but Woodley's game plan obviously needs to be to, to get this fight to the ground as, as often as he can. Uh, that's his, his key to, to winning this fight. So you're picking Tyron Woodley? I think Tyron uh, Woodley can, can win a decision here. Um, the longer it stays on the feet, the more dangerous it is for him. Obviously, we, we've seen what Daly can do with his hands. Yeah, what about Safadine versus Smith? Smith's coming off that a vicious knockout loss to Paul Daly. Safadine, a disappointing loss to Tyron Woodley, said uh, the nerves got to him in that fight. Who do you think uh, is going to win in that one? I think Safadine can, can win a decision in that one. He, he's younger. Uh, he's fresher. He's got a lot more to, to gain from a, from a victory here. 
Um, Scott Smith is still dangerous. I felt a little bad for him on Wednesday. Uh, he mentioned that he, he believes people have kind of written him off as a has-been. And I asked him, do you really think that people think you're a has-been? And he said, yeah, I, I really think some people do think I'm a has-been. Uh, his one win in the last few years has, has been the Kung Lee fight, which he was dominated for you know the majority of the fight and then had that amazing uh, comeback. Uh, he's got a lot to, uh, to lose if he loses. Right. If he loses this fight, that could be it for him in Strike Force, right? It, it could be. I mean, he, he may be done. All right, let's talk about one more fight on the main card. Uh, Tim Kennedy versus Robbie Lawler. This one's an interesting one, and, and I see you're bringing out the hat. Are you going to go to sleep on us here like Robbie yesterday? Is that what's going, is that what's going on here? I might. The poor guy was so <laughs> tired, bored, aggravated. I, I'm not really sure what his, what his uh, situation was, but uh, good old You can go Robbie. to sleep. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, Robbie, it's, it's hard to, uh, to gauge where his motivation is. He just didn't look that into it. Not Wednesday at the workouts, not yesterday. I know you had a hard time getting a lot out of him about the fight, uh, and that's kind of always been the case with him, I think. Um, he, he's got a tough road to hoe, I think, on, on, uh, on Saturday night. Do you think the fact that he was sleeping during the press conference was a sign that he was uh, not motivated for this fight, or was it just Robbie being Robbie? He doesn't like doing media stuff, and he was kind of bored. I, I think a little bit of both. Um, I think he was, maybe he was a little aggravated. There weren't a lot of questions being uh, thrown his way, uh, not toward till toward the end anyway um like i said it's just it's really hard to gauge him you know i, I think he sometimes can be a likable guy and then sometimes he's very standoffish and you just don't know what he's thinking where his head's at i find this fight to be the toughest one to predict i really don't know what to expect you know robbie um has looked pretty good at 185 when he fights at 185 except for the jacare loss and he actually looked pretty good in the beginning uh, of that fight and, and kennedy you know he had a tough fight against jacare but came back and looked pretty good against melvin manhoff what, what are you expecting to see from these guys I, I think kennedy can get the fight uh to the ground robbie's uh weaknesses are there um kennedy doesn't seem to think that uh, he mentions uh, some of the folks that, that Robbie has been submitted by and says, who wouldn't get submitted by those guys? Uh, but I think if Kennedy can get this fight to the ground, he can submit him. So you're picking Kennedy via submission? I am picking Kennedy. All right. How, how sweaty are you right now? Um, this is terrible. Uh, yeah. This is terrible. I'm not even wearing a jacket. I need to put the yeah. beret back on to guide the bald head yeah, from I the sun. so bad. I feel like you got a sunburn on your, on your dome there. It'll be okay until I shave it. Should I just stand here and make him feel uncomfortable for the next 10 minutes? I don't know about that. Uh, we'll, we'll let Matt go and, and, and remind you that if you want to see two MMA legends fight on Saturday night, tune into Showtime beginning at 10 p.m. Eastern, also 10 p.m. Pacific, when uh, Fedor Milianenko fights Dan Henderson. There may not be a lot on the line in terms of titles and, and whatnot, but this is a, a legendary fight and, and kind of a, a fantasy fight for hardcore fans. So, so tune into that, and don't forget, MMAfighting.com, we have your live blogs, your, your post-fight analysis, columns, all that stuff, and of course, course our post-fight video interviews. For Matt Erickson, I'm Ariel Hawani. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on Saturday night.